Am I the asshole for enforcing all the rules on a employee who refuses to stay past 5? First off please read the entire post before downvoting it isn't as simple as the title makes it out to be. Background. I directly manage about a dozen employees in my department and overall I try to treat my employees the best I can. One such way I try is I don't dock, penalize my employees for being late due to circumstances outside their control, such as traffic, family issues, car problems, etc., as long as it doesn't become a habit. For instance they are supposed to be in the office at 9 and ready to work by 9.15. This gives them 15 minutes to get settled, get some coffee or breakfast, MWF I have my assistant pick up donuts, breakfast tacos, etc. out of my own pocket. I don't monitor them to see when they start working or dock their pay if they are occasionally late. In exchange for this if they are working on something at 5 p.m. rolls around I ask them to either finish it or at least get to a good stopping point before leaving. I never expect them to work more than 15 minutes off the clock without comp or overtime. Also of note is that it is maybe one day a week where an employee ends up staying late so it not like I am asking for 15 minutes of free labor a day. Issue. I have one employee who refuses to work one second past 5 p.m. without getting paid for it. In response I told her it was fine, but from now on she would have to be at her desk logged in and working by 9.05 and any days she is late that time will be docked from her pay and written up if it is past 9.15. She is furious about this and has complained to other co-workers about it to the point where four different employees have come to me to let me know. In response I had HR come talk to her and she ended up being written up and put on probation. The issue isn't that she can't work past 5. She is willing if she gets paid for the few minutes. If she had said she had to leave at 5 for a good reason then I wouldn't make an issue out of it. Now she is complaining to others, off company time so I am not going to do anything about it about how unfair I am being and I was trying to fire a poor single mother, she gets paid around $65,000 USD. So far she has been written up twice for being late and I told her today, her second write up, if it happens again in the next six weeks she will be terminated. So the question is am I the asshole for expecting employees to work a little time off the clock and am I the asshole for enforcing certain rules for one employee not the others? This is legal in my state because she is not be treated differently due to any protected class. Edit for everyone saying it is illegal at the end of every month I have the system reconcile the their actual work hours versus their paid hours and if their work hours are greater they are offered either comp time or overtime pay for the difference. In the last six months there were only two occasions where someone worked more than five minutes longer in a month than they were paid for and both times they were awarded comp time to compensate them. Edit 2 There is some poor wording on my part. What she wants is to be credited with a 9 a.m. start time like other employees in the department even if she is a little late but have her exact end time. So if she arrived at 9 o'clock and works till 5.15 she wants to be paid for 8 hours and 15 minutes, but if she arrived at 9.10 she wants to be paid for a 9 a.m. start time. Basically she wants every day to treat it in the manner that benefits her. Everyone else is paid for 9 to 5 and if their hours exceed 40 their actual times are used to determine if they actually worked overtime. Am I correct that you are giving everyone essentially 15 minutes of free paid time every single morning and in exchange only asking that they be willing to stay up to 15 minutes late occasionally as needed? In this case, not the asshole. If you are on the US, not only are you are the asshole, but also violating the Fair Labor Standards Act. You cannot legally make a non-exempt employee work off the clock. There is tons of case law about this, and HR should have told you, because it is your company that will be responsible for back pay and damages. Not the asshole. Logged in by 9.05 is more than fair if she's not willing to stay a minute past 5. Everyone is being paid the same hours and should be expected to do the same work. Sounds like she's creating a really toxic work environment, and I'm guessing most coworkers won't be sad to see her go not the asshole. If she wants to leave on time, she got to arrive on time. Fair exchange I'll say. It's not like you don't pay them if they actually spend more than a few minutes to wrap up their things. Not your fault that she arrives late. You are the asshole. Just because you give your employees a lot of stuff they never asked for, coffee, food, late starts, doesn't mean they're supposed to work for free. Period. Keep a normal schedule and pay people for working late. It seems like this is hourly work anyway, so it doesn't matter if they're clocked in 15 minutes after 9 because they're only being paid for time on the clock. You are the asshole. If you are truly in the states you are setting your company up for one hell of a nasty lawsuit. 
It doesn't matter if it is one second or five hours, one day or every day, it is illegal for employees to work off the clock. And you are now setting double standards. Yeah. Harassment works so well. Info. Why isn't your HR department answering this question for you? Not the asshole. Overtime starts at after eight hours of working not at a specific time of day. You are actually being very very nice to your employees. I've never worked anywhere where I've been given 15 minutes of on-the-clock time to get prepared for my working day. If an employee needs that, they do it on their time, not the company's. Am I the asshole for demanding payment for items ruined by a child I was supposed to supervise? A few days ago, my neighbors, early 40s M and F, approached me and asked if I would be willing to watch their daughter, 11-12, Rhea while they went to get vaccinated. I agreed. I made it clear to my neighbors that they would have to pick up Rhea before 1.30 p. M as I had a court hearing I couldn't miss the hearing under any circumstance, I am a lawyer. They promised they would be back in time. At around 1.30 p. M they informed me that they would be late. It was too late to make any alternate arrangements so I fixed Rhea a quick lunch and told her to watch TV or Netflix. Child mode enabled. I finished up my hearing by around 3 and came out to see Rhea. I found her in my bedroom trying on my heels, lipstick and other courtroom gear such as a black blazer and robe. The lipsticks were broken, the white shirts were stained and the heels were scuffed. I do not know how that girl managed to cause so much damage in the first place. I was angry but I did not see it fit to reprimand her. Ray's parents finally showed up around 3.30 p. Emin took her home. I asked to have a word with any one of them. Her father stayed back and I told him about the items she ruined and that I expected him to repay the amount for cleaning, replacement after I show them the receipts. I expected him to apologize. But instead, he blew up at me and accused me of leaving his young daughter alone and claimed that anything could have happened to her. He even threatened to file a case against me. I was taken aback. Firstly, I would not have left her, unsupervised, if him and his wife would have returned on time. Secondly, I do not feel that 11 is an age where she is in danger if left alone. I told him to try his luck in court and stated that if he doesn't agree, I would send them a demand notice for the aforementioned costs. Him and his wife have gotten the residents association involved, and while some of them are on my side, others are saying I'm an asshole for, using the lawyer card, over something so tiny, the total cost of items ruined is well over 10,000 rupees. So, am I the asshole? Edit. I am sorry I left out this crucial detail, I never actually left my home. I was attending the hearing virtually and was in a different room in the same house. The door was closed but unlocked. I told Rhea she could enter or call out my name if she needed anything. Update. This morning Ray's mother came to see me. She apologized for her daughter and her husband and said that they were late because Ray's father thought it would be a good idea to not complete the mandatory registration for a vaccine and simply tried to walk into a center face with rolling eyes. She was terrified at the idea of going to court and said she would try to get her husband to pay. She's a housewife, no independent income. I told her not to worry. I won't take the cost of the items and I wouldn't send any notice. I also wouldn't be watching their child again. She understands and apologized once more, she bought some delicious food as well. She admitted that her husband spoils their daughter and she is also concerned, but she is silenced by her husband. Not the asshole. They were late, and an 11-year-old should definitely know better. Not the asshole. At 11 I was babysitting for brief times and earned money bussing tables. I don't understand this child behaving like a toddler, but perhaps she's delayed or poorly parented. While it may not be great to leave such a kid alone, you set an expectation about your availability. The parents knew you were only available until 1.30. They are the ones who left their kid without adult supervision for 1.5 hours. Not the asshole. First off, you made it clear to your neighbors that Rhea needed to be picked up by 1.30 because you had to work, and they were two hours late. Next, the girl is 11. Age 11 is plenty old enough to know that you don't enter rooms without permission and you stay out of other people's stuff if you don't have permission to use it. I'm bored, is not an excuse for causing property damage. So, no, you are not the asshole, however I doubt that the parents are actually going to pay for your things. It sounds like behavior like this is common for Rhea and they just dismiss it. Op maybe include in your post that you never left your house since court was virtual. Not the asshole, the child is old enough to not get into trouble. The parents majorly went back on their word and caused you annoyance. Sue them for your wasted time and the cost of the food you gave the brat. 
What kind of an idiot threatens to take a lawyer to court? NTA. The child was 11, not 4 or 5. More than old enough to know better. Not the asshole. The lawyer card is part of being a lawyer when someone damages your stuff, and especially when they try act like a jerk and threaten baseless legal action first. The parents broke your terms for agreeing to watch their kid and your stuff got damaged as a result. Plus if you had skipped your hearing to keep watching the kid you could have gotten in trouble with the court and or your client. I would demand they pay every cent they owe. Not the asshole you didn't leave your house, your hearing was virtual. 11 is old enough to self-entertain with Netflix and not get in trouble for two hours. Would I be the asshole if I tell my friend her dog can't stay while she's here anymore? My, 27 female, friend, 28 female, got evicted, and fired from her job in the same week. She said she was going to spend $1,000 a week in a hotel with her two yo while her other two kids stayed with her mom. I offered to let her stay with me. She let me know her dog, I forget the exact breed, but it is a type of mastiff, would also have to come with. I was cool with this, and I normally love dogs. Well we tried to introduce him to our, boyfriend lives with me, and it's his cat originally, cat, and the cat hissed and took a swipe at him, but didn't actually scratch him. The dog then lunged for the cat and scratched up my boyfriend's foot trying to get to Mr. Kitty. Yes, that's his real name. So not good, but not 100% why I'm posting. Afterwards we sequestered the cat in our room, and when my friend went to take a nap she brought the dog in the room with her. So I opened our bedroom door, and after a lot of coaxing to get the cat out of our room, he promptly fell asleep by my boyfriend on the floor next to the couch my boyfriend napped on. About 45 minutes or so later she texted me saying she needs to let the dog out. So I collect the cat and put him back in my room. Well the cigarette break she took before letting the dog out caused him to piss right on the spot where the cat was sleeping earlier. Then after I got up to clean it, she left to get stuff for her kid right after bringing the dog outside. I saw he might have also pissed on my antique couch in the seam where the seat meets the back of the couch, it was wet, and smelled, but I didn't actually see the dog piss there. Where my boyfriend, who smells more like the cat than I do, because allergic, but damn do I love that furry bastard, was napping moments before. He is not a puppy, and I was told he is fully potty trained. I think the dog is doing this to rid the house of the smell of the cat or something like marking his territory. She has another dog that's only staying for the next 24 hours till her other friend gets back in town. It's a chihuahua, and my cat is bigger than it. So it's not like the mastiff isn't used to being around small animals either. Our cat grew up around dogs, before I met my BF. So it was weird that Mr. Kitty was so reactive to him as well. I don't want to make this decision too early or too rashly. So we will probably try to introduce the animals again tomorrow and see how that goes. If it doesn't go well again, would I be the asshole if I ask her to find another place for the dog to stay? Edit. I forgot to say this is the first night with my friend staying, and the first day the dog has been here. Edit 2. Update. One of my neighbors let out their Maltese out on a lead to go to the bathroom, and the dog busted through my screen door to attack it. Broke my friend's finger while she was trying to get him off the Maltese. The Maltese is fine, no injuries. Thank God. My neighbors understood, and were nice about it at least. The dog is definitely not staying now regardless if I'm the asshole or not. Not the asshole if she was going to pay $1,000 a week to stay at a hotel she can afford to put the dog at a pet resort temporarily. Not the asshole. You're doing her a favor and she thanks you by letting her dog piss all over your house and terrorize your cat? No, ma'am. Not the asshole. It's hard enough taking in a family, let alone the dog on top of that. Mastiff breeds are usually pretty big, and also, it is your cat's place, not the dog. I have six cats and would never subject them to that kind of fear and anxiety in their own home. And, if she claimed the dog was potty trained but you're constantly finding pee around, it's probably time for the dog to go anyways. Do. Not. Risk. Your. Cat. If the second meeting doesn't go well, it may just end your cat's life. Just because the big dog is good with small dogs, doesn't mean he'll treat your cat well, and cats know what's up, so I'd trust his judgment, if you know what I mean. Not the asshole. The fact is the dog has peed inside twice already. And is stressing your cat out. Not the asshole. Your property is being damaged by her animal. She needs to pay for any damage to your furniture and find a place for her animal if she cannot guarantee that the behavior will stop. Just be aware that if she needed to bring the dog with her, 
she most likely will not be able to find another place for it immediately. You need to figure out if you are willing to ask her to leave based on the behavior of her animal. I can't make a judgment here, dogs get as easily stressed as cats in new situations. The dog has been moved around, is in a new space, and has new housemates. It's not abnormal for him to try to mark some territory. It's also not the best plan to just throw a cat and dog into a new situation together to meet for the first time. I'd try a slow intro again, and give the dog a day or two to decompress personally. Why WNBTA? Am I the asshole for replying to email from kid school? Throw away as I don't want to be found by X. Fake names. My, 31M, X, 34F. And I got married young as she wanted to have a baby and I wanted to make sure we were legally family so I could be there for my kid, L, 9. My parents were opposed to us having a baby and getting married as neither of us had jobs or finished university, but X convinced me, all we needed was each other, and her family kept pressuring us to, give them grandkids, and I was young so I believed that they loved me more than my own family and married her, changed my name, Matthews, to her family name, Alan. We were together seven years but eight months after our marriage, she filed for divorce because I didn't want to live off welfare and wanted to include my fam in Elle's life. Once we got pregnant, they gave us a flat, subsidized childcare costs, offered to help X with her degree but she refused and dropped out anyway. I was looking for jobs to support us while she barely even let me around L because nothing I did was ever right. She moved back in with her family, shutting me out completely and her, loving, family turned hostile and taught L to reject me because, I was just a devil who abandoned them, we went through a terrible divorce, where my ex told the judge that I, had no interest in L and I was using L to get back into her life, so the judge granted very restrictive visitation. They also ordered me to change my name back to Matthews, so the only link I had to L was gone. I still had joint parental authority so I try my best to be as involved as I can with L's life. I started the process of changing my name back immediately after the verdict but due to panic, the paperwork got delayed by four months so whenever I had to sign something for L, I legally had to sign under Alan. I'm part of the email chain for the parents of L's class and it, at that point, was under my married name. I got a letter from my ex's lawyer threatening to sue me for, identity theft, for still using Alan, despite me telling X that I was obligated to use it because the paperwork had not been approved but X insisted that I tell everyone my name was Matthews. So when I received a chain email a few days later from a parent addressing me as Mr. Allen, I replied back to all, please update me in your contacts as Mr. Matthews. That is my name that I am in process of getting back, as required by court order. I understand that X is not comfortable with this name anymore so I'm taking the steps to recify it as soon as possible. Thank you, all hell broke loose I got an email from X's mother who said my email was out of order because it has caused X and L to be, social outcasts, and, how dare I reply to emails and contact the school directly when I know I don't have custody. I tried to explain that I still have joint parental authority but X is suing me to remove my parental authority as well. Under the terms that I, abuse my rights at the detriment of L, am I the asshole? Buddy, you need a lawyer, or at least, a better lawyer. Because the mother of your child and her family are jerking you all over the place. If your ex is suing you to remove your parental authority, then you are gonna need a good one. Ooh, you responded to an email. From the school. And you made them social outcasts. Oh, my. Well, maybe they shouldn't have done things that make them look like bad actors. OMG and you did nothing wrong here. Not the asshole best of luck. You need legal help not a judgment call. Not the asshole, assuming this is all true. X insists you use your maiden name, then gets mad when you correct the name with the school? She can't have it both ways. What the? I cannot fathom a court's decision to limit access to your kid that much solely based on her word. Anyway, not the asshole. What else are you supposed to do? I don't even understand why this would have caused your ex any problems, especially when she told you not to use the name. You don't need Reddit dude you need a lawyer. Not the asshole. Your ex and her family, on the other hand. How dare I reply to emails and contact the school directly when I know I don't have custody. You may not have custody, but you are still Lowe's father. You have the right to respond to emails from school. Just curious. What country did this happen in? Not the asshole. I guess you replied to all so if the other patents addressed you they'd use, Matthews. I'm not sure you needed to include all those details in the email. Just for your sake. People can be weird and you don't want it to change how they view your son. It's clearly negatively impacting your wife. 
but it's your story so you can share as many details as you want.